Podcast World. What's up? Chad Belding back at you. Another episode of This Life Ain't For Everybody. I am excited as heck about today's episode because I'm inspired by this individual. Very influential in what I do on a daily basis. Has the right approach, the right mentality. Today's episode of This Life Ain't For Everybody is brought to you by our friend Salt Lake City Traeger Grills. The Traeger Grills Revolution. It's absolutely amazing what Traeger Grills has done for backyards all across this country and other countries. Making us all aficionados in one way or the other. Giving men, women, and sometimes even children the confidence to prepare awesome tasting meals, wood pellet driven auger system meals through the Traeger revolution. It's absolutely awesome. Check out their line of grills at TraegerGrills.com on Instagram at Traeger Grills. Check out the Ironwood. Check out the Timberline, the Pro Series, the Ranger, their pellets, their rubs, their sauces. You name it, they are the leading authority in taking backyards to the next level and making families even closer than we were at one time in this country. I'm proud to be affiliated and I'm proud to have our guest today, President and CEO of Traeger Grills, Jerby Andrus. How are you, buddy? You know what? I'm pumped up after that introduction. Boy. Freestyle. Uh, all freestyle. Was, uh, there was a lot there. I love it. I'm so good. I'm so good. Uh, you know, it's it's an interesting moment in life. And uh, there's a lot going on. It's a little bit surreal uh, what we've been through the last six weeks or so. But life's good. Family's good. Happy and healthy. People are cooking more than ever. No complaints at all. They really are cooking more than ever. I've heard um, rum, ramblings of the demand for specialized meats, you know, the Snake River Farms, the the, the companies out there supplying that, the grills. P- uh, obviously, people are staying home. And, and I think this is going to have a, a huge impact in an optimistic, positive way, Jeremy, of when this is over of them having the confidence to keep doing that and not necessarily the mindset that they have to eat out as much as they once were. 100%. You know, look, it's a... Uh it's six weeks ago. We're all trying to figure out what in the world is going on and sort of a scary moment for everyone. The reality is, is that um, there is positive in everything that we do. And uh, even in this moment, you think about staying home, spending time with family, getting outdoors. You know, my family and I have been in the mountains hiking a ton uh, we've been cooking on our Traeger seven days a week, and it turns out we are not alone. And, uh, you know, that, that's actually been fun for us to watch. It's uh, People are staying home, but they're making the best of it. And they're finding something positive in this moment. So, you know, one of the things that we see in our connected uh, connected grills is this spike in, in, in cooking. And we literally saw that from the very beginning. We said my gosh, what in the world is going on? Is this sustainable? And every week it has risen. And we're literally, you know, we're cooking more than Super Bowl levels every single week. And that's a grilling week and weekend. But uh, I love that people are doing, you think about finding a hobby. And, you know, when you truly love it, you love it when you get good at it. And this is one of those hobbies that, we think it's it, it's it's positive in the lives of families, and you pick it up and you get good, and like you said, you get confidence, and you just want to keep doing it, and that's what we've been doing around my house. It's almost like you know, working out and and muscle memory kind of you get you start to see a little bit of definition and then all of a sudden yeah. your your time in the mirror naturally starts to go up like wow look at that i i do, i can get a bicep oh man look at that i got a little bit of a vein and now it's like wow did you taste those ribs well now i'm gonna try this man did you take it's 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 kind of that it's same fun. deal it's just the confidence just keeps building yeah look i i think uh you know as as human beings we inherently like getting better at things and when we do, we enjoy them more. And there's no question. But I like I look at from the first time I started cooking uh, on on a Traeger to today. But then I look at the last five or six weeks, and and like my wife and I are cooking, you know, together almost every day, sometimes more than once a day. And we're getting better, and we're trying new things, and we're gaining confidence. And uh, it's been super positive for both of us and our families. Yeah, if you think about it, you have an opportunity to either gain somebody's trust and develop credibility with them on that first attempt. 
it's almost like in what I do. If you want to get somebody introduced to what I do for a living in duck hunting, you don't bring them out there when it's negative eight and four inches right. of ice and the kids can't feel their hands. They don't want to go back. You want to bring them into a situation where they can see a little bit of success, have fun, stay comfortable, and then just keep up in the ante a little bit. And that's yeah. what with Traeger, they could easily turn that on and go, man, that wasn't for me. It was too difficult. But everybody that turns them on is like, I need a ranger for this part of my house. I need one in my camper. I need, it's, it's amazing. So with, with that being said, and you touch on what's happening in the Traeger community, you're the, you're the guy, you're the, 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 the head of the organization, but you don't, you take a responsibility of that, but you have an unbelievable team. And from at the outside looking in, which some people get the opportunity to come to HQ and meet you and meet a lot of the team. I'm very fortunate for that. But for, for the general customer base of all of your dealers across this country, the aces and the home depots and the mom and pops all over this country and Canada, the higher percentage does not get that opportunity. So with that being said, where I'm going with that Jeremy is I feel that in, in an organization, that product quality and culture are like the top there's leadership and there's yeah. organ, there's all yeah. of that that goes into it and there's CFOs and financials and numbers and all of that. But if you don't have a product to believe in and your employees don't feel like they're part of that product culture and your messaging and your way of leadership, then the chances of you getting to where you've gotten in the last 60 months are not very high. In my opinion, is that safe to say? hundred percent. Look, I mean, you, you, you just hit on, Three things that I'm so passionate about, and and I want to start with the the, the team piece. Um, I I end up being I end up being as a leader an outward facing person for the brand, and you know I I have an opportunity to have conversations like this, but it's so important to acknowledge I'm one of many people in this organization. We have members of our team who are so good. They're so good. And you look at the output of what we're building, and it really is a collection of people that are so committed, they're so passionate about what we're doing. Uh, they care so much. And I see that across our organization. Um, you mentioned culture. You know, I am such a believer that culture is what drives output in businesses. And I think you can look at culture in any team environment, whether it's you know, it's athletics, uh, in any organization, culture ultimately trumps everything. And so every, every company has people who are good and who work hard. But when you find the intersection between great people and a culture that inspires them, that's when things like this, like Traeger, start to happen. So I just want to be careful in acknowledging that my team is what makes this organization great. And I get a chance to tell the story, but it's the team that does this. Um, you know, product. We are a product-driven organization, and we have to be. Great product is ultimately what you lead with. And then you build brand, and you distribute, and you find great retail partners. And of course, you need a supply chain. You've got to move product. Uh, you've, got, you know, you've, got to, you've got to pay for it. You've got to collect for what you sell. But if you don't lead with product that's high quality and that's innovative, something that does something different, that gets a customer like you and me excited, then you can't win. Nothing else can compensate for bad product. And so this is something that, boy, you look at, you know, the product organization six years ago when, uh, when we acquired Traeger had a guy. <laughs> Actually, it, it had to. Had one guy and had, had, had a woman who's a pro project manager. And if you look at it now, we have hired some of the best and brightest and most passionate product people in the world. And we will never sacrifice on product. I love that, Jeremy. And you say the way you put that brings to mind something of. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but Joe Rogan, who is a, a friend of yours and a, an acquaintance, you guys work together. He, he yeah. loves Traeger, loves eating wild elk off of his Traeger. Five years ago, you did not hear the rumblings you do like about Joe's podcast that you do now. But everybody thinks that Joe Rogan just started his podcast and he's been going 11, 12, 13 years. Right. 
he is a genius at it. He is so good and, and so diversified and so well-spoken on so many different levels. I look up to him and what he does. I look forward to meeting him hopefully one day. But where I'm going with that is that when you come into this organization six years ago and put together the, the, you know, the equity part of it and getting it, ref, you know, the new team in charge, the new leadership there, the new executive branch of it. I, I, I had, I'm just being transparent. I would never heard much of Traeger and they've been around since I was 12 years old in 1987. Right. And where I'm going with that comparison is that, did you have a vision for it before you stepped back into your office and closed that door? And you were now Jeremy Andrus of Traeger when you had just come there, did you know what you were getting ready to do to get it to where it is six short years later? You, you know, it's a, that's a really interesting question. And, and I'm going to answer that two ways. One is that, I would love to be able to say that you you that you write the end of the book at the beginning, but that, that's just not the nature of, of of business. Strategy strategy evolves along the way, and you figure things out. Uh, but I did have a vision for this business, and it was rooted in two things. Number one, this uh, you know food is such an important part of people's lives, and you know, food for a long period of time, it went towards fast food. And then you look at outdoor cooking and it went towards propane grills because they're, they're quick and they're clean and they're easy. But none of these things created great experiences. And so I saw food as this incredible opportunity, outdoor cooking that brings families and friends together. The second is that, um, you know, this brand that had been around since the mid 80s, I had never heard of. And yet when I talked to people who knew of it and owned a Traeger grill, they said, I love it so much. It's brought me something that I never that I hadn't had before. And so the combination of the passion that existed and the belief that food is it's central to how we, you know, it's not just calories, but it's relationships, it's enjoyment, it's lifestyle. The combination of these two things combined with some business philosophies that I believe in really formed my vision for what this business could be. And it goes back to, um, you know, invest in great product, hire a great team, build a culture that people aspire to be a part of. And these things start to create something meaningful. And so I did have a vision early on for what this business could be. And the strategy evolves along the way, but it was always around families and team and culture and great product. And I will tell you that um, the goalpost is moving along the way. And it's moving because we start to see this opportunity is far bigger than I envisioned six years ago. By the way, it's far bigger than I envisioned 12, 12 months ago. And so it's part of what I love about being an entrepreneur. You have a vision. You're willing to pivot as you learn more and you control your destiny. You can make whatever of it that, that you choose to. And this one's fun. It's been just a ton of fun to kind of evolve along the way. But some of the original vision is started from day, day one and it's, it's been intact since then. But it was not a gimme. And that is where, that oh. is your specialty in my opinion. And you, and again, correct me if I'm wrong and just interrupt me if you need to, but you're 40 something like this is, this is what blows my mind is that we'll leave it as something that's, I yeah. know, <laughs> but you're, you're 40. Let's say you're 40. I don't care. You're young. Hey, that, you're young. Yeah. yeah. Your family's young. Your wife is awesome. I've got a chance to meet her. You have kids yeah. that adore you. You're a great father. You're a great role model, but in business, you have those same qualities. And what I mean by that, Jeremy, is I don't have to tell you what I'm telling you right now for me to be a partner of Traeger. I get that. This is uh, this is between me and you on a podcast format, yeah. uh, the entrepreneurial spirit of America, because what you did is you didn't take on a, a, a lemonade stand with a barbecue sitting next to it and say, hey, I can get that on a couple more streets in one city in America. You took on a, a, a whole product line that was already in the marketplace that had people saying it changed. I, I love this thing. I can't, I don't want to be without it. You put together this team and you come in there, there's got to be a history. And I know that you had history in other companies that you helped build and expand, but where does, 
the word CEO mentality come from? When I lay down at night, I <clears throat> think about a great leader. I think about not military and drill sergeant, but somebody that is focused. They understand short-term, mid-term, and long-term goals. And the, the especially, they understand of what seats need butts in them. Who are those butts going to be in those seats? And am I going to be a micromanager? Or am I going to be somebody that lets somebody spread their wings and fly as yeah. long as the culture is put first and the company is never put in jeopardy? It seems to me like you just have this, you have to give me a little back background of where you got that yeah. mentality and became such a powerful CEO at such a young age. Cause it's not very common. You know what? So, so first I would say that you're, you're, you're right. Not, nothing's a gimme in life and, and certainly nothing is a gimme in business. Um, you, you know, I, I've done this before Traeger. I, I, I built a brand called skull candy before this. And honestly, I look back at, at my period at skull candy you know, I was a CEO in my or in, in my early mid thirties, and I look back and I realize that I was just making it up as I went along, and I had so much to learn. And this is one of my beliefs in in business and in life. You know, it's um, there's a lot of pattern recognition and there's a lot of learning that goes with experience, and and even more more so than sort of sheer intelligence. If we're willing to acknowledge the patterns and learn from them, we become better. And we be, when we become better, we see growth and we feel good about ourselves. Um, Traeger's been hard. I got to tell you, I love it now more than ever. But early on at Traeger, we went through some tough things, some things that I never believed I would ever go through as a CEO or in business. Nothing really prepared me for that. But I have this philosophy, which is this, this belief, which is, you know, there are all sorts of different types of uh, business leaders and leaders in the world. And what I really believe in is that you create a set of cultural values and these values inform who you bring into the organization. Who are they at their core? What do they believe in? How do they behave? You know, um, and, if, and, and if as a CEO, you truly filter for these values and you end up bringing in really high quality people, not just good at what they do, but really high quality human beings. And that's ultimately what forms organizations. So, you know, I've learned a lot along the way, but the most important thing that I've learned is if you filter at the door for great people, then you figure these things out along the way. And, you know, there, there are leaders and it's sort of interesting to look at leadership over time, but there are leaders who pound their fists and they are cutthroat and, uh, you know, they're abusive and they're aggressive and they can get results. Um, I don't believe that those leaders get the best results. And I also don't believe that people stay. I don't think you get the best out of people when you operate based on fear. And so my strong belief is that when you respect people and uh, you and you invest in them and you build them up and you push them to do things that are that 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 are beyond what they believe their capabilities are, suddenly you bring out the best in people. And as a leader, when you bring out the best in people, you can accomplish so much more. You know, it's it's so easy. You, you use uh, Chad used the word micromanage. It's so easy to jump in and say, I can do this and I can do it better. But you can't win as an organization if you micromanage people. The opposite is actually true. Uh, you give them leeway. You empower them. You push them. You say, you can do better. I believe in you. And then you start to see throughout your organization, people are not only doing more than you'd expected, but it turns out, they're actually better than you at doing their jobs. And to me, that's the coolest part about being a leader. So when you talk about how in your young to mid thirties, Jeremy Andrus of, of making it up as you were going, would you agree with me or disagree that you are born with certain traits to become a 
good leader, a good CEO, not, I don't like to say the word powerful CEO, but have yeah. that mentality of what you're doing to drive a business that you have proven you can so many times and do it well. Are you born with it or can you go to school to learn to be a CEO and end it please by saying, can you go to a raw, raw function like a Tony Robbins, which I, I, I like Tony and I like some of his messages, yeah. but can uh, you become a Jeremy Andrus by signing up for a $5,000 three day course in Miami or can you even go to Harvard and learn? I know you can learn business and I know you can learn numbers, but can you learn the CEO mentality to become a great leader in an organization? Boy, there, there's a lot to unpack there. First of all, Tony Robbins is great. And we, we can all get fired up for a few days, but being a leader is not about being fired up for a few days. It's about developing a self-awareness and a set of habits that you repeat day after day after day. And what I have found in some of these leadership courses, in some of these motivational courses, is that we've got this great blip in time. And then three days later, we go back to being whoever we were before. And I always thought this, so part of the reason I wanted to go to Harvard Business School is that um, you know they're, they're all about creating great leaders. And I said, I want Harvard to make me a great leader. Well, I tell you, I go. I went through Harvard Business School, and and now that I'm 15 years beyond that, you know, I look at leadership through a different set of lenses. I see those who went to Harvard Business School who are great leaders, and those who aren't. And the reality is that it's probably more of a, of a place that you pass through, and those who had leadership capabilities going in had better leadership capabilities coming out. It's not to say that we can't all get better uh, in, in whatever we want to, but I do believe that there are some innate qualities of leadership that we, we that we have. And I don't know that it's that we have them or we don't. It's sort of like, you know, a- athleticism. Like we're not an athlete or we're not. We've got Michael Jordans and then at one and another of the spectrum you have less capability. And so I think it's, you know, what are you born with? And that matters. Genetics matter. And then how willing are you to really develop those? You know, I look at myself and say, I wasn't the leader 10 years ago that I am today. And by the way, if I'm not a better leader in 10 years from now, I will be disappointed. If I look back and say, my my best moment as a leader, I accomplished in my early mid forties, then 20, what am I going to do the next 20 years? And so I do believe that qualities matter, DNA matters, but what matters is what we do with them and how we get better because of them. Oh, it's very well said. Is there a fear that could be instilled in your mind, Jeremy, of the word indisposable and the role that that word could play in a person's mind of like this organization does not get here or stay here without me. I've seen that mentality. I don't like that mentality. I learned in athletics that nobody's indisposable. You can be replaced in a heartbeat. Um, Not that maybe by somebody with the same talent, but do you ever have a fear, Jeremy, that if somebody came along and wanted to do like you built up school candy and then it goes to another organization, do you, did a fear into your body at all of like, man, if I'm not here, my baby's not going to flourish anymore. Yeah. Do, do you ever fa- face that? Like if somebody came in and said, dude, you have killed it with Traeger. We want to put all this money together and we want to take it from you. We're not, we're not interested in retaining you, Jeremy Andrews. You've done your job. See you later. Do you have a fear in your body? Like, man, I don't know if, I don't know if, if, if they see what I'm really doing here. Boy. Um, so first of all, the word indisposable, when you're human beings, it's, it's, it's a word you hate to hear because... Is indispensable it, a better word? It, you, you know what? It, you, you, want, you want to believe that, that you bring something unique because of who you are. Now, as a CEO, if I were to be honest, I do a good job if I build an organization that I can step away from, and it goes just as well when I'm gone. Now, leaders that are filled with paranoia and fear, what they tend to do is worry about hiring uh, better people, and they worry about you know sharing all of the secrets and all of the data because suddenly, you know, what value am I? 
my belief is that be, becoming indisposable, um, well, be, be, becoming replaceable as a leader means that you've imparted all of the culture, all of the wisdom. You've built a team that's so good that it, that a business survives, not only survives, but succeeds without you. And so that's important to me. Um, if your organization is strong, then people can come and people can go. Um, you know, my, my hope is that, uh, that Traeger gets strong enough that one day, uh, yeah, I'll, I'm not going to spend my whole career at Traeger. Now I have no, I have no intention of leaving and I absolutely love it. And Traeger is like, it's part of me and it's so important to my life. But I hope that my team is so good that, uh, that, that I just become irrelevant at some point in time. And, it, and it's, it's, it's hard to say that because that hurts a little bit, but I think that's what great leaders do. But, but fear doesn't enter the mind or the body when you're thinking Listen, about it. So I, I got to tell you, so I, 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 I fear that Traeger with the wrong team in the wrong hands over time um, may, may not be the same of it as it is today. However, the reality is that, and, and this is where, you know, even as a leader, acknowledging that, that we have insecurities and that we fear, I think that's, I think that's important in reality. Yeah, I do fear what Traeger may look like 20 years from now. By the way, it's like, I, I have a healthy level of fear and anxiety and it motivates me to do things. But what, part of what it motivates me to do is make sure that I build a platform so a foundation that's so good that it survives forever. I mean that that's really my goal in Traeger, and that's my team's goal. We want to we want to build a great American brand, and we want it to last forever. Yeah, that's awesome. So you you have a, an idea that you have a team that's in place, and you have the right people in the right place. You look for certain characteristics, certain experiences, you read resumes, you have people in place that read resumes down, you know, in, on, in different levels of the company on a daily basis. Are you watching the success and these guys flourish? Like you're like rooting them on and you're like, man, this is unbelievable. Like you get an opportunity and in the, in the, let's say your marketing department takes it to the next level. Are you consistently um, not trying to be a part of every project, obviously, but are you consistently telling those guys the, the qualities that they're portraying, the things that they're doing, the, 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 the risks that they're taking or whatever that, that you support them? Do you step in and say that there's not going to be a lot of support about something like that? How close do you get to certain projects like that? You know what? Um, I like to be close to the people. I, I really, really do. And, you know, long term, we've got over 500 people around the world. Um, when you have cultural values, if you teach them the right way and you evangelize them, then ultimately your people, your people are better and they feel like they know you as a leader and like they know the, your organization. But I really, I, I'm more motivated to stay close to people and their accomplishments than I am to every business decision. And it's, you know, actually, I, I got a great note this morning. Uh, from one of my favorite people in the world. He was one of my earliest partners at Traeger, Danny Bruce. And uh, you, you, you know, Danny, amazing human being. And he sent me a note from uh, someone who used to work at Traeger, who had reached out to him on LinkedIn and said, Hey, I just want you to know that you said something to me one day and your example to me over time really had impact on me. And, and, and he talked about an experience that he'd gone through and he explained why he was a better person because of Denny Bruce. And I just thought that was the coolest thing in the world. It's like, th this is what leadership is all about. Leadership is ensuring that you inspire your people to become better, but not just better for you, not just better for the place of employment, um, better, better human beings, better moms, better dads better community members, better partners, whatever it is they do. And Denny shared this note and I said, you know, virtual high five. Denny, this is awesome. This is a testament to your leadership. And, um, you know, it reminded me of a book that I read 
by Clayton Christensen called How Will You Measure Your Life? And he describes management as a noble profession. And it's noble not just because you are employing people and you know you're you're giving them uh, income to support their families. It's noble because you make people better. This is what I try to stay close to in the business. And by the way, we talk about our people every week. I know most of the people within Traeger. And I know them because we talk about them. And I reach out to them. And I write them notes. And they stay in touch. And I bring them into my office for lunch. People that I never interact with on on a day-to-day basis. I like to know the people because that's ultimately, I think, when we look back in 10 or 20 years, I don't think ever are we going to say, hey, remember, you know, remember how great 2019 was. Remember the stock price went up, not public, but remember our, our revenue grew by, you know, X amount. I actually don't think we talk about that at all. I think we look back and say, remember so-and-so. Do you know what she's doing now? Do you know where he's gone on, what he's accomplished? You know that Traeger was an important part of this person's life and success. And so this to me is ultimately what matters in business. And by the way, it's also, it's consistent with building a great business. You just respect the people. They feel that and they want to be better and they want to do more. And it's not just the immediate family, meaning the employees that walk through the HQ doors every day. When I see what Traeger's done and I bring up this man's name a lot, Benny Kendrick in central California, the, the life and the confidence. And like, I get goosebumps thinking about like what Benny, Benny has said to me several times face to face um, experiences with him in in, in events and hunting camps. I, I, I don't really know that I didn't know the Benny when he first started, but I could almost bet as much money as I've ever earned in my life that it wasn't the Benny that we see now because I hear the rum. And to me, like that shows the culture of a business that will motivate this individual to go out and not, he is nowhere near a show off, right? He is not trying to say, rah, rah, look at this salmon I cooked. He's, he is literally returning probably an average of 500 direct messages a week on instruction and just ideas and, and inspiration, right? Like that to me is a telltale sign of what the culture and what this brand has meant to so many people of giving them that feeling like, I belong here. And yeah. then you compound that of a family saying, this is where we belong, not on our iPads on the couch. This is where we belong right here. Even though it is so easy to say, I'm not going to be that guy that goes to lunch and gets on my phone a little bit because it's it just, it's a, it's not a shame, but it's just the way the world is now. But now you belong here. This little gr- unit that has that word Traeger written across the lid of the barrel has got made these families feel like this is where we, this is what we're doing. This is, and I, yeah. and I truly see that on individual basis and then in family, in communities. And I don't know if you do, but I see it quite a bit. I do. You know, 100%. Look, um, having impact is everything, Re- regardless of what your circle of lymph influence is. Traeger happens to have a very, very, strong platform and and a connected community. And it's so awesome to watch the community support each other, to watch the community go out and cook for, you know, uh, for a high school graduation, for uh, first responders in in whatever moment in time. I'm glad you mentioned mentioned Benny Kendrick. Benny's unbelievable. And I got to tell you, I, I found Benny just randomly on Instagram, I don't know, five, five and a half years ago, he had 2000 followers. He had a couple of grills in his backyard when he purchased, you know, on, on an infomercial. And, uh, I got to know him and I realized that like Benny is the, is the most humble, kindest human being. And I've watched Benny grow. You know, he grew from, you know, a guy that was a little bit, sort of shy in his backyard, trying to uh, candidly trying to work through some, some, uh, some challenge that he had in his life. He, he lost his brother and I was hard on him. And I watched him grow as a person and um, he's unbelievable. I mean, that, that guy, you talk about a platform for good. Benny has influenced for good so many lives. And that's because, number one, he cares about people. 
and you watch him create content and he does it with love and he does it with purpose in mind. And honestly, at the end of the day, at the end of our lives, I think we will always look back and say, the things that I did that were positive, that had had positive influence on others, those are the things that also bring me the most joy. And I got to tell you, I see that Traeger Nation. Like I just see this unbelievable support system of people that are cheering on other people that are part of the community. That's life. That's cool to be a part of. I, could you imagine like growing up, let's say you were a soccer player and you could reach out to Pele and just be like, Hey, Pele, can I, can I, can I bounce a few things off of you on my dribble real quick? Or Hey, <laughs> Hey, Hey, Hey Jordan, you mind if I stop by your gym and, and shoot a few free throws with you or just learn how to dunk like you do and hold your tongue that certain way. We could literally go to Pittman. We could go to Ward. We could go to Diva Q. We, we could go to the major leaguers of backyard grilling and not one of them will ever say, dude, I, I'm not, I can't share that recipe with you. Um, yeah. I don't have time. It's, it's just an amazing feeling that you could take a Benny Kendrick and go from backyard shyness to him walking the best yeah. barbecue down the alley at the Royal with the top barbecuers in the country that are successfully placing in the Jack Daniels, the Houston, the, the Royal. And now he's, he's literally like part of this team out of, a, out of a culture, not because he's ever won a ribbon or an award in any barbecue contest. That to me is like saying that you could go never learn how to dribble a basketball and go be on the Chicago Bulls and have them and right. give you a ring. It's just, it's a weird feeling that you could actually do that with the all stars in this community. And they don't, they don't title themselves that they don't act like no. that. The, the humility is incredible. They're humble. They're, you know, they're, they're humble people. And there, there are a couple of things that are really important. This is, is we find partners around the world. Number one, they are humble. They have this genuine passion for what they do. Uh, but most of all, they care for people. And, I, and it, never do I want someone on my team who believes that they are more important than the cause or the purpose. Never do I want someone on my team who is arrogant and thinks so highly of themselves that they're, they're, they're not kind and respectful to other people. All of the partners that you've mentioned, they're part of our Traeger family. And they, they truly do embody the values that are so important to us. By the way, that's why we love to work with them. You, you like to work with people who inspire you. And these people inspire me as much as they do any of the people that you've described who reach out. And I love it when I reach out to Danielle or, or Matt or Benny, and we have this, this super positive, great exchange. Like we're just friends and we're peers. And it's what makes getting up every morning and being part of this community uh, just so satisfying and so much fun. Could you imagine being at Harvard and like having a dream one night in your dorm room that one day you would be standing with your wife and there would be ribs and brisket being cooked to your left craft cocktails being served to your right that were smoked on a Traeger sides being made in the <laughs> kitchen, a band getting ready to go on the microphone, seminars being done downstairs and, 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 and still, even when all that's going on, there's a strategy meeting happening over here. There's a video production being released and watched in one room. Could you imagine having the foresight to be able to be like, man, I, I think that I'm going to have that someday. That is like what I picture myself doing at 45 yeah. years. Could you imagine having that insight and being able to yeah, be like... I, I, I got to tell you, I feel like I'm living a dream because I love it so much. Um, I hope I never have to get a job because Traeger for me is not a job. Like I, I wake up and I love this stuff every day. And it's uh, I didn't envision this. Although this is what I had always wanted, I really, I really love it. It's, it's, it's my friends, it's my community. By the way, you, you mentioned my wife. My wife is a foodie, and she loves to cook. She loves to eat, and like our inner, like our lives have truly intersected with Traeger. And suddenly, it's like what what we do every day, we love equally. She's been an important part of this because she shares this passion. And no, did I envision this at, at Harvard? No, but uh, it's it, I have to pinch myself. It's better than I ever expected. And and I and I got to tell you, my my wife and I talk about this just because you know our kids are at the, our kids are at these magical ages. You know, we got six kids between four and twelve years old, 
life is good. We're all healthy. Uh, we, you know, we love what we do with Traeger. And, you know, the one thing that we say whenever we step back, and it's usually in a calmer moment, late at night, kids are in bed. There's nothing calm about our house when the kids are in bed. And we say, you know what? Life is really good right now. And a couple of things come to mind. Number one, you can't always control the future. So be humble and recognize that this is a good moment. And the other is when you have an opportunity to reach outward and do things for other people who have much more need than we do, do it while you can, because we just believe the combination of these two things, stay humble, help others, is good karma. And we can't control everything else. But those two things, in a moment where things feel too good, we can control. And I love the control, the self-control that a, that a Traeger nation, a Traeger culture, and a Traeger product gives me personally, Jeremy, to where I find myself even having more humility in life. Um, I'm 45 now, and I'll give you an instance of being on a deck at a high Sierra lake in California called Almanor, and picture an 885 Ironwood with kids pizzas across the bottom rack with speckle belly geese full body pluck geese on the top rack all lined out and then asparagus on the left side of the rack on the top and this gentleman that's in his 70s walks up and he, he watches the show and he's a just a wealth of knowledge and he's so nice and you just love when he's around and he walks up and he opens the grill and i'm standing there and he looks at me and he closes the grill and he puts his arm around me and he goes there's not many people that could do that and i looked at him i go I'm telling you, dude, any, this whole thing right here is, is every day, is every day you do this. Like you can make this own dream barrel full of what you want. And I'm sitting there finding myself defending him, giving me a compliment that I'm a a good (laughs) chef. And now I'm like, I'm like letting it ricochet off of me to please go to somebody else and tell them that they're good. And I think I've gotten that way over being around people like you or, or other, you know, people that are are saying exactly who are what you're saying, the humble, the teaching kind, the accepting kind. And when he said that, I was just like, these guys really think that I'm something special. And I think it's more so that I'm actually taking the time to do that. And that's what my point in saying this, Jeremy, is that Traeger has given us the ability to want to take that time to our propane grill. eh, It's cool. I mean, you go throw it. So I'm not going to talk anything bad about anything. I think a whole other podcast I would love to do with you in the future is competition and how to stay in your lane. And Uh, how do you take that on? And and, yeah, yeah, that's a great conversation, but I just look at it like, there's no competition to this culture right now. This is giving me, I am up in nowhere, California, getting a compliment yeah. from a 70 year old man that I am a great cook and a great person for supplying this food to all of these people that are getting ready to come in off of their boats and enjoy it. Isn't that a crazy feeling? Like it's, you, you know, it is, it, it is. And, and, and what I, what I love about what you said is that this really goes back to abundance mentality. Me being great, and you being great takes nothing away from my capability. The more people that are having this moment of, I've got everything set up, I'm cooking this amazing meal in this breathtaking location, I'm doing it for my family, we're together breaking bread. That's an amazing moment, but the abundance mentality and, and the one that, that we really believe in at Traeger is that everybody can do that. And that, that's, that's the beauty of this. And, by the way, it's also part of the, you know, we're, we're, we're a business. You know, we're a for-profit organization. Uh, I have investor partners and they want to make money. However, there is, a, there is a mission and there's a purpose to our organization that is so far more than selling the next grill or making money. And I think that purpose is part of what drives us. Everyone wants to get their paycheck every other week. That's part of the reason we work. But what is equally important to Trey, you talk to anyone who spends time there, it's that they feel good about the mission of the organization and how we're creating value for other people. And that's that's pretty cool. I think it's way cool. And another thing that I would tell you that is way cool and ask you why you never shied away in your approach in marketing and acceptance of 
a hunter, a person that harvests animals, a person that lives off the land, a person, you guys have never made excuses for supporting the culture. As long as it's ethically, as long as it's done right and legally, you guys have never made an excuse for supporting a hunter like myself or a Chad Mendez or a Joe Rogan or any of those guys. We, we, uh, I guess the bottom line is like my good friend, Remy Warren says, Jeremy, he says, everything comes with a cost. And if you choose to be a vegetarian, that's fine. Do it with dignity, but just understand that something is dying for those vegetables to be grown. And That's right. so I just love the fact that you and your mentality, and then all of these individuals in your organization that make up the Traeger community behind at HQ, they have never looked at me like I am a bad person for living off the land and harvesting my wild animals. Listen, we, uh, first of all, we, we acknowledge that meat doesn't come from uh, the meat fairy, right? And so... We are outdoorsmen. We, we totally respect that. Uh, I think, you know, anyone who goes out and hunts and harvests and does it in a respectful way and brings it home for their family and cooks it on a Traeger, like there's, there's nothing more like this is life. Like we, we, we believe in that. We respect it. It's part of who we are. We don't shy away from that. Now, by the way, we also respect anyone who wants to believe however they choose to believe in whatever life they, they choose to live. We respect that. But uh, be, being outdoorsman is part of who we are. We, we believe. That's awesome. In today's world where it's so easy to become infiltrated with content that's so readily available at our fingertips, do you find yourself, I guess what I'm saying is, Traeger has capitalized in that market. They have the social media, they have the apps, they do a great yeah. job with them. But do you still find validity and, and, and valor and just an unbelievable great feeling that overcomes with the disconnect also that Traeger provides of, you don't always have to record your meal, even though the pictures are uh, nice and the video's nice and it sells the units and it gets the word out there. Isn't it nice just to disconnect and just be there with it? You know what I mean? Obviously you got 100%. the, you got the Wi-Fi and everything uh, to run the app, but it's so nice just to not worry about getting content, content, content. Yeah. Listen, um, this is actually something that we talk to our kids a lot about. Our kids, surprise, surprise, love devices. And devices can be fun, but they can be addictive. And sometimes what your mind needs is to get outside, shut them off, enjoy the moment that you're living in, and not think about how can I explain this moment to everyone else outside of my backyard. Being present is one of the most important things that you can do. And I'll, you know, it's, it's something that I've thought about a lot about over the last few years of my life. You know, as a CEO, my life is busy and you don't ever really shut off. Like your mind is going constantly Sunday night. You know, what's, what's happening the next day? What does my week look like? And I remember having this moment and people talk about being present and how do you, you know, how do you put your device down? How do you, you know, how do you be present with your family in nature, whatever it is that you may, may, may do? And I remember there was a moment a few years ago, my now six-year-old daughter, uh, she was three years old, standing at the dishwasher. I'm doing dishes after dinner. Uh, my, my phone, I keep getting text messages. She's lying on the ground with her feet on the dishwasher, telling me a story. And I'm like doing the dishes, putting the dishwasher, checking my phone. And uh, she said, Dad, will you please listen to me when I'm talking to you? And I said, wow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. By the way, I didn't say that immediately. I had two thoughts. One was I could say, Gwyneth, I am cleaning up the meal that I just cooked for you. And I'm responding to Traeger messages so that I can afford to put the next meal on the table like that. That's the defensive side. And how old is she? Sorry. She's six now. Six. She's three then. She's Very three. precocious little three. <laughs> and and the other was to say, you're right. Like you're totally right. Like this moment's never going to happen again. Oh. And yet I'm sitting there texting about business. And yes, business matters, but it didn't matter more than that moment. And so um, I actually, a um, couple of days later, I, I made a decision. When I walk in my home, when I come home from Traeger, I take my device and I put it in the cupboard. 
And I put it in the cupboard because if it's in my back pocket, I'm dead. Instinct. I'm going to take it out. I'm going to get sucked into something. And, you know, it, it really, I get a few hours to cook, to do the dishes with my family, to get outside, go for a hike, jump on the trampoline, whatever it is. And I'm able to be present because of that. So back to your comment, we need those moments. Like, I think having a connected grill is amazing. But by the way, there are moments where you need to push your device aside, go out, hang out in your backyard, have a drink, hang out with your family, smell the uh, the smoke rolling, and enjoy that moment and get off your device. No question about it. I, I don't remember the last time anybody that emails me on a consistent basis or my business dealings, I don't remember the last time that... 24 hours mattered. I never, nobody ever called me and said, why didn't you return my email when you were doing the dishes and and, and talking to your daughter last night? You know what I mean? And that's our mindset when we're driven is like, we gotta be, we gotta be, we gotta be in the mix all the time. And then when your daughter, my daughter, Alyssa is nine now and she will literally say, dad, put it up. It's time to do this. It's time we're doing this. And I'm just so thankful for that because yes. it, 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 it makes me pump the brakes, which I'm not very good at. And, and it may, now at, at 45, I'm just like so relieved when she's around to where I can take that deep breath. And I'm even mm-hmm. right now developing better tendencies of putting it away, putting it down, never texting and driving. That's not even a, a question. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, but I just think that with that mentality, you find yourself like we were going to, you were going to go to Zach Brown la- uh, before this happened on in, in Salt Lake a couple couple weeks ago I caught myself um at the at in San Francisco Zach Brown was opening for the Eagles Vince Gill had replaced Glenn Fry and Henley was on the drums and I'm sitting there w- watching the Eagles through a four inch screen. And I'm like, what am I going to do with this video? I'm going to go back and I'm going to show my world of duck hunters and all these people that I'm branding with. W- wow. Wow. I'm with the Eagles and I'm sitting there. Yes. W- they're right there, like right there. And I'm watching it through a four inch screen. Yeah. And I'm watching it through a four inch device. Like it matters that somebody's going to see this in five years. It just, it, you could go find any Eagles performance from 1970 to current on yeah. YouTube right now. Yeah. It's crazy. You know what? So it's interesting you say that. And this is something that my that my wife and I talk about with our family. We don't really, we're not big consumers of things. We don't get excited about toys and cars. And we get excited about experiences. And there, there, there's a lot of, you know, it's interesting that there's a lot of research done on this because it's such an obvious comment. Experiences get better over time. Your memory of an experience gets better and better. They, they appreciate over time. And yet, if you spent the entire experience trying to capture it on device, you actually don't ever experience it here and you never experience it the same way on a device. And so as opposed to spending all of this time trying to capture a moment to prove to the rest of the world that we had it, enjoy the moment. And you know where it lives? It lives up here and it lives right here and it lives with all of those people that were present. And like, social media can be a great thing. I love to watch my, my parents on social media. Like, I, don't see, I don't see them because they're, they're in quarantine right now, but I get a chance to see what they're up to and I get a chance to call them and say, that was pretty cool, cool project, cool hike. But so social media can be a very positive thing. But when, when like capturing the moment on a device becomes so important that we can't actually enjoy the moment, there's something we're missing. Bad. And it's so, it's almost to where the conversation depends on it. Like, dude, my daughter did a backflip off the diving board. Oh, really? Prove it. Where's your video? I caught a fish this big. Oh, really? Where's your picture? I don't know. I didn't have my phone in my waders. I was just fishing. You have to trust me that I know how to fish. And if you don't document it and you don't have proof, it's like, you know, shame on you. And I'm like, no, I I really did. I really did have a good duck hunt. I shot my gun one time, but we cooked on the Traeger in the blind. We told stories. My dog did this. And everybody's like, but you didn't kill a limit. And I'm like, 
I don't, I don't, that's not what matters to me that that's I right. don't need proof of that. I want, if I'm going to document something, I'm going to document this lifestyle and how much of a privilege it truly is to get to even wake up in the morning and go duck hunting and eat off a Traeger and go and process and butcher my game and be able to feed to my family. I'm going to document the experience of that and, and, yeah. and not just that animal going through that part where it's losing its life. That to me is minuscule. So please trust me that I do know how to bait a hook and yeah. catch a fish and I don't don't always need to prove it to you through documentation or video, 100%. right? And, and, and by the way, if you haven't documented the size of the fish, then you can say it was this. Big. Yeah, exactly. You don't have to. Have you, proof. You know, listen, it, it's something that I worry about in my own life because I am an adrenaline junkie. I love adrenaline. I love being connected. I love like all of the energy and commotion and chaos. That to me is fun. However, there are moments where we need to be still, enjoy an experience, be in nature. And like the device creates noise in our head. And sometimes we need to put it aside and just not be connected to the device, but be connected to ourselves and, and the environment that we're in. I couldn't agree more. And I truly appreciate your time. And I'll end it by this, Jeremy, is we, we launched a new app last Tuesday, the 14th of April. You're excited about this. But the grill behind you, we Traeger has the best grills on the market, but it doesn't stop. The innovation's not stopping. Your brain's not stopping. Yeah. It's it's an ongoing process. Do you find yourself right now finding some stability in the portfolio, or yeah. are you constantly jumping to the next oh, idea? I, you know what? So that, that's an interesting question. The answer is, I'm never satisfied with where we are, and uh, every once in a while, I can step back and say. Team, you guys freaking rock. You crushed it. But what are we going to do next? And, and I do that. And, and honestly, I, I get so much joy in the creation process. I'm so excited about our future product roadmap because, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's not about widgets and things. It's about delivering something that has, that helps a customer have a better experience. And that truly is what keeps me up at night. So I love what we've done. I love it when I look at the the six years history, six and a half years history that I have with the brand, but I can't tell you how excited I am about the future. Uh, I wish I was a, the type of guy that could just enjoy thinking about where we are and where we've been, but uh, that occupies this much of my mind and the rest is occupied by what can we do more what can we do bigger? What can we do better? That Traeger Nation says, you've got to be kidding me. I thought that was cool. What about this? And so that 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 that's what keeps me up at night. That's my adrenaline. It's a ton of fun. Well, I'll tell you this, Jeremy, is myself, our entire team, like so many other individuals and communities around the country, we're humbled and proud to be part of it. We're excited to see where it goes. And we're fired up to do it with you and, and experience and, li- and you know, just ride this ride with you. It's it's truly amazing to me, the marketing. that There's just a lot of things that, that I could pick apart and talk to you for hours. I truly appreciate your time. And this has been a lot of fun for me. Chad, you're, you're, you're part of the family. Uh, I have loved getting to know you. We love working with you. And uh, let's see what's next. Let's keep doing it. Heck yeah, buddy. That's been another episode of This Life Ain't For Everybody podcast. That's Jeremy Andrus of Traeger Grills. What a brand. What a culture. Like I said, we're proud to be part of it. Check him out at TraegerGrills.com, at Traeger Grills on Instagram. Nonstop non-stop just innovation and just prideful become a backyard aficionado become a provider stay with your family stay home right now stay safe take care of you and yours we wish you the best of luck tom please hit that button this is our good friend leith lofton what you gonna do when the money's all gone you are blessed i know indeed it ain't what you want is having what you need i'd rather be poor